Hello and welcome to Media Nama. So some interesting developments have come up in India's food aggregator sector recently. Now on March 19, Zomato's founder Dipinder Goel had posted that the company will be coming up with a pure veg mode. Uh, the pure veg mode uh, involves the creation of a veg fleet of delivery workers that will specially look at veg food. Now, the tweet that he posted came with a picture of a delivery worker who is um, wearing a green jacket and has a green delivery bag behind him. Uh, under the caption that said that even veg food that comes from a non-veg restaurant uh, will not enter the pure veg food delivery bag. Now, obviously, after... Goyal had posted this, um, a lot of people reacted to the news, raising concerns about how this could be a discriminatory move, especially for the delivery partners. Um, at the time, Goyal had said that it's not just veg food, the company will be introducing this policy gradually, and that it will be expanding this to other types of foods as well, like cakes and stuff. Um, even so, uh, like I said, a lot of people had raised concerns about it, um, because of which the next day on March 20, Goel had tweeted saying that he has taken the feedback of the people into consideration and that they will not uh, make any on-ground on discrimination or segregation of the delivery partners. So basically, this means that as of March 20, Zomato had said that they will not have separately colored uh, bags or separately colored shirts for the delivery uh, workers who will be in this pure wedge fleet. Um, and later on, on March 20, uh, Goel had then further said that uh, he will be responding to certain customer concerns like whether the uh, delivery workers themselves will be discriminated against based on their own dietary preferences, to which Goel had said no, that this will not happen, um, as well as uh, the fact that, let me just pull up the tweet. Uh, the delivery partners' payouts will also not be impacted due to the separate fleets. Now, like I said, a lot of people had reacted to this news on March 19 itself, which included our founder, Nikhil Pahwa as well, uh, who is here with us to speak about this issue today. So, Nikhil, you were among the first who reacted to the Pure Wedge Fleet announcement, uh, and your original tweet was critical of this decision. But since then, Goel has made changes to this policy, and you have also been follow following these changes closely. So can you explain to us why you raised an objection in the first place and what is your current stand on the status quo right now? Uh, thanks, uh, Valerie. Look, um, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, right? What Zomato was trying to do was find another avenue for monetization. What Dipinder had said in his original tweet was that um, their, their research, their data has indicated to them that there are people who may not be using Zomato because, um, you know, they come from religions that, or they come from a particular sect in society that that uh, only uh, eats vegetarian food. And so people worry about the spillage of uh, non-veg food into vegetarian food if there is the same person carrying, uh, carrying them. Um, and what Dipinder said was that this is only going to come in from pure wedge restaurants, um, also because there are societal concerns that these people have, um, that, you know, the same kitchen might be cooking both wedge and non wedge So the segregation, so to speak, that was being done was that, that pure wedge deliveries were going to come only from pure wedge restaurants and with delivery workers wearing green uniforms. And uh, those that were coming in... Uh, I mean, no, restaurants that serve both veg and non veg, those deliveries would be uh, from delivery workers in red uniforms. Now, uh, we've seen that across the country, there is an increase in 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 societies and RWAs and buildings um, that are becoming discriminatory in nature in terms of, for example, uh, they don't allow people who eat non veg. Um, to to get to rent apartments in that building, um, and uh, they they tend to discriminate against people who eat non-veg. And 
you know, um, what also happens is that uh, there is a color here that is religious color. In the sense that there are people who, uh, especially Muslims, do not get um, apartments in colonies and areas because um, they use, uh, if not religion, they use food as a criteria for not allowing them to take a place. Um, in fact, someone I know had to sign a lease uh, uh, in Ahmedabad which, where the contract said that no non veg food would be cooked or allowed inside the building premises. So, um, in a sense, there's a friend of mine who responded to this, to this entire situation by saying, Kapro se pechan, as in, you can recognize what the delivery workers carry uh, by the food, uh, by the color of the uniform. And uh, there are people who may be staying in these societies, in these buildings, but they would still be, uh, uh, they would still order from a delivery service like a Zomato or a Swiggy, non-veg food. They just don't let anyone know that they're having it, right? That's their freedom to eat what they want to eat, where they want to eat. And and, and so um, for me, this was essentially systematically, uh, it was building a system that was built around discrimination and that would allow societies and house, housing societies, RWAs, to discriminate. So for example, they would they could say, that only those Zomato delivery workers who wear red, green uniforms are going to be allowed in the society, uh, which then robs customers of an op of an opportunity to have food from other places. Delivery, delivery workers wearing red uniforms, delivering even veg food in these societies could be harassed uh, or not be allowed inside and not allowed to deliver. You're essentially uh, cementing discrimination in society to a move that the company is making um and you know i that's why i found this problematic because it essentially then cements that segregation in society um so yeah you um you rightly mentioned that there was a there is a religious color here and uh, a lot of retweets also mentioned that this move might be caste or this move might be religiously motivated um, but according to you, what is the rationale here that Goel was likely using? Was There must have been a commercial or a business uh, point of view from which it was coming. So do you feel that there is uh, there's something to be said over there? So, uh, I, look, uh, companies have to make decisions in order to in increase shareholder value, increase their revenues, increase their profit. And if, let's say, research had indicated to them that there was an underserved market that is choosing not to use their services simply because of that risk of mixing of food and spillage, risk of spillage, and because in their religion, let's take Jains as an example, um, they don't have onions, they don't have garlic, they don't risk, uh, they don't have eggs, they don't risk mixing. Um, there are, I've, I have Jain friends who, at times, uh, on occasion, don't even eat at other places because the food might have onion and garlic uh, and they bring their own food. So for them, it is a matter of their religion and there are people who follow their religion in, in different ways. You know, like someone was uh, put out a video saying that there are eight types of vegetarians in India, including those that might have vegetarian and onion and garlic and vegetarian, but not onion and garlic, or they might, be, they might have vegetables and they might have egg. Uh, they might eat vegetarian at home but be okay to eat non-vegetarian food outside so this comes in different shades and that's the society that we live in um and so for a business to add a new cohort or a new constituency to their uh, uh to what they do uh, makes sense if they want to create a new service for a different population that makes sense uh, but I think we need to remember here that businesses don't just have to cater to shareholders. They have to cater to stakeholders. And stakeholders includes everyone. It includes uh, the shareholders. It includes the customers. It includes the delivery workers. It includes employees. And it also includes, uh, at that scale, society at large. And so they have obligations to society as well. Not and to the delivery workers and not just to their 
shareholders. So this new liberal philosophy of only maximizing shareholder value and only maximizing uh, you know profitability is flawed uh, because a business does it can't just move fast and break things, uh, especially when the impact is at that scale. I mean, for example, there were there was a critique at one point in time from uh, from Zomato uh, saying that uh, a customer didn't want to eat food delivered um, by a Muslim delivery person. And Zomato responded to that by saying uh, food is the religion and that food doesn't have religion as one of those things. And that's the right approach to take. But given that in India and in society, um, food is food preferences are often linked to religion and to caste, uh, there are social hues over here and there is. And so that risk of, of segregation, the risk of being able to identify that for a delivery worker being able to identify, will they hire Muslim delivery workers in that fleet is one question that I had, right? Uh, would they hire uh, non-gen delivery workers? Would they hire people of a particular caste? So how, where does this end? Uh, in, in For example, Sikhs and, and Punjabis at times only have uh, non-vegetarian food. Um, that is jhatka food, as it is called, right? Because they believe that it is less cruel to the animal. Whereas in Islam, uh, they prefer halal food uh, because they feel that that leaves the meat more pure, in a sense, right? It drains out the blood. And so different religions have different religious preferences. Um, the Sikhs don't have halal and the Muslims don't have jhatka. So then will they have separate fleets for both of them as well if those constituencies are created? Where does this end is the question, right? And and so that was really it, that what is the what are Zomato's values over here? Um, and what is their responsibility to society at large? And can that be overridden uh, by the need for expanding the base and building and uh, in terms of profit, right? And adding a new cohort to it. Uh, and what's more important to them is the question. Do you feel like they're taking this into consideration with the updates that they're coming up with? I think they've received enough feedback. And so, for example, the decision to not uh, have green, have color separation uh, between the two fleets is a right decision because uh, for a person who has only pure veg food, getting an assurance from the company that there's going to be separation uh, of delivery fleets, it might be sufficient. It might give them the confidence that they will get food only delivered by a person who's only delivering veg food and from only a pure veg place. right? And I think that is fine. It's when it leads to discrimination that becomes a problem. Um, and so the decision to have a singular color uniform for the matter delivery workers instinctively makes sense. Uh, also because it doesn't lead to a discrimination between delivery workers in the sense that one delivery worker could get beaten up for carrying non-vegetarian food into a colony or a building uh, that doesn't allow non-vegetarian food. Right? I don't think buildings come with red and green stickers to identify which is a wedge building and which Not is yet. a non wedge building also. But that's just unfortunately how society is currently um, behaving. Our, our WAs are a mini country into unto themselves. Um, and they can bully and they can uh, push people uh, to leave. They can, I mean, there are talks. I remember someone mentioning that there are people who rummage through garbage to know to check if someone's eating non vegetarian food or not. That is what our society has devolved into and that's unfortunate. And my only reaction was that Zomato shouldn't be perpetuating this segregation in this case. Okay, so we are talking discrimination. Now, um, an interesting tweet that Prem Panikar had come up with uh, on March 19 was that he mentioned, uh, he had cited a Deccan Herald report and he had mentioned how uh, almost three out of five biryanis per uh, day that are ordered are usually non-vegetarians. 
and he had made the argument that with this wedge fleet, what is essentially going to happen is that the regular fleet that will be delivering both non-wedge and wedge food will be uh, overloaded with work. Um, there is also the fact, he didn't mention it, but there is also the fact that with the wedge fleet, there will be much more coherence in how they're going about. So for example, the restaurants that they will go to will obviously be very specific restaurant, very specific veg restaurants in the localities. So how do you think this policy is going to impact the gig workers operationally? Actually, neither of those points really make sense to me, I'll be honest. Uh, I think every city has enough pure veg restaurants trying to cater to enough people who want to have only um, veg only food. And I think the way the phrase pure veg is also problematic, but mm -hmm. uh, veg only food. And so it's not like a delivery worker won't have enough uh, restaurants to go and get food from. Um, no, the other no. aspect is uh, the other aspect that you'd raised uh, about um, the uh, the the workforce that delivers both veg and non-veg getting overloaded. I think that's an issue for Zomato to manage in the sense that uh, if they might have to increase capacity to be able to deliver to both. Um, and uh, in that sense, as long as the for the delivery workers, they uh, their returns are not impacted, I don't see how this is a problem. Um, I There is enough unemployment in this country, um, and if this brings them more employment and Zomato makes enough money to give more people um, to hire more delivery workers, uh, I think that's a win-win situation. One of the issues that gig workers have raised is the fact that there are these erratic workers and the erratic routes that they have to take. Uh, do you still feel that this is a win-win situation? Uh, I think that erratic workers and erratic routes are a function of Zomato's capacity uh, to hire. Um, and like I said, if their capacity to hire increases, uh, perhaps those will... Uh, those might get reduced. But like I said, I think that is really not material to this decision and this segregation of fleets. Um, I, I think those are operational issues which Zomato has to figure out irrespective of the fleet segregation. Um, so looking at restaurants now, do you anticipate that there will be some reaction from restaurant unions as well on this decision because the veg fleet will give an additional service to the veg restaurants in the area, which non-veg restaurants won't have. So do you feel it may nudge non-veg outlets to say that we want now a special service that only caters to non-veg folks and non-veg restaurants? Uh, look, the phrase non-veg by itself is a function of the phrase vegetarian, right, or veg. Um. I honestly don't see the difference in terms of what non veg how it impacts them because um, it depends on whether there is a large enough user base that wants veg only food. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, my assumption is, and this only data will play uh, will indicate over a period of time, uh, there are probably going to be more takers and more restaurants that serve. Um, vegetarian and non-vegetarian food, both as compared to those that serve only vegetarian food. Um, that's again, like I said, an operational issue with Zomato will have to figure out. Um, as a person who eats non-vegetarian food, I don't think one there are any non-veg only food uh, restaurants. They cater to all types, in a sense. You may prefer to order non-veg only from them but they cater to all types. I don't think that there's a separation. Yes, there can be a demand or a requirement, or there might be a demand for segregation of uh, food in terms of halal and jhatka maybe, uh, halal especially, and there are, across the globe, there are constituencies that prefer to eat only halal food. Um, and, uh, and that includes uh, uh, both uh, people, uh, I mean, who practice Islam as well as uh, as well as Jews, so uh, kosher food for them, for example. So, so there might be constituencies that prefer only halal food. Um, 
and if Zomato is given an option for people to choose uh, veg only restaurants, it makes it only makes sense for them to also in their app at least um, ask to choose for uh, to show halal only uh, restaurants as well. Um, whether they have an issue of spillage and 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 therefore they don't order because they uh, they're not getting halal only food is again for something to be figured out with respect to that constituency. But as Zomato feels there's a big enough market there. Perhaps they can cater to them as well. Like I said, I'm not as a business. This decision uh, makes sense from a societal perspective. I don't think it does. Do you think there is anything that Zomato could have done differently here, be it in terms of announcing the policy or planning the policy? Yeah, I th I think a little more uh, thought could have been given to how this might impact society. I mean, Zomato is not inexperienced in this manner, right? Like we discussed earlier, there was a person and there was a hue and cry about, um, you know, uh, a person not wanting to eat food delivered by a Muslim delivery person. There are instances in this country where people have said they don't want to ride in a cab that's being driven by a Muslim person. And the companies in both cases have responded to the situation and said that, they don't discriminate on this basis. The person doesn't want the right. That's their choice. Uh, but this is a societal issue that exists. And I think Zomato would have done better to have understood the implications of what this means for people, uh, for their customers, beyond just the customers that they're serving. Like I said, it's not just about shareholders. It's also about stakeholders. Therefore, every decision that you take as a business is not just about the people that you are serving, but also the people that you, uh, sorry, with that particular service, but also other people that who are also your customers, right? And I don't think Zopat, the matter took this into account. Like, look at how quick the reaction was. And that reaction was that quick and sharp because people have either seen this discrimination or they have been subjected to it. I have only been subjected to it when I was, for example, looking for an uh, for a paying guest accommodation in Pune when I when I when I'd gone to college, and there were people who were said who were saying that you're not allowed to bring non-vegetarian food into the into the room, and you can't cook in the room. It wasn't cooking, but they said you can't bring this food into the room, and I rejected those places. But for many people, those options are dwindling. Um, Right and or the societies that they want to live in, that uh, or the housing areas that they want to live in, those are dwindling, and so I think you have to take some of these aspects into account when you're taking decisions that could lead to discrimination, and it could have helped if there was, for example, a focus group discussion that took place, or they had a pool uh, where they could have talked to a pool of customers to see how they would be impacted by it. Um, or just someone with enough um, empathy uh, within the decision-making team. Because I understand that in the startup ecosystem, data drives decisions, as they say, measure what matters, but and, and, and then do what, uh, and what is, also what is measured is what is done. In the same way, uh, the numbers were driving this decision by the looks of it. Um, and it took that feedback, and I think kudos to Zomato for responding to the feedback uh, and progressively, in a very short period of time, making those changes. But I think a little more thought, a little more uh, um, empathy at the time of decision-making could have prevented this entire thing from going down. They could have done better here. And I think it's something for Zomato to take into, into consideration for the future. It doesn't reflect well on the company's decision making um, and the company's leadership to, uh, you know, to launch something like this, uh, get a massive negative amount of feedback, and then to roll it back. Of course, there are people who are still supporting this move. Uh, but I would say that that comes from lack of empathy. I, I think Zomato should perhaps uh, have had done a risk management exercise 
uh, and they should do this for everything that they roll out from here on. All right. Thank you, Nikhil, for sharing your inputs. We will, of course, be following the Zomato developments at MediaNama. Um, to everyone watching this, thank you for listening to us. And for more news on tech policy, do follow MediaNama. Thank you.